to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Father's glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Ungodly men said, Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's son, he will help him. And we deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture, that we may find out how gentle he is, and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. For according to what he says, he will be protected. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. your name by your power defend my high cause oh God hear my prayer give ye to the words of my mouth behold 
Lord. Behold, the Lord is there. Upholder of my life. For the proud of against me and the ruthless seek my life they have no regard my help the Lord sustains my soul I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, without uncertainty or insecurity. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes war and what causes fighting among you? Is it not your passions that are at work in your members? You desire and do not have, so you kill. And you convert and cannot obtain, so you fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not seek. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. To spend it on your passion. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Alleluia. Jesus Christ 
According to man, at that time, Jesus and his disciples went on from the mountain and passed through Galilee, and he would not have anyone know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them. The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had discussed with one another who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sends me. Thy gospel of the Lord. anyone would be first, he or she must be last of all and servant of all. These words of our Lord to his disciples taken from St. Mark's Gospel, which we have just listened to. It's a lesson for life. My dear friends, first of all, I want to thank the associate pastor, Father Emmanuel, for this opportunity to celebrate this Eucharist with you. And in a special way, Father Kenneth, who just proclaimed the gospel. I am sure he has prepared, he had prepared some thoughts to share with you in this evening's homily. But Father, since I am the first among you, I have to be the servant. And he willingly conceded this assignment to the bishop. Last Sunday, we had a very 
troubling gospel. Gospel in which Jesus called Saint Peter the first Pope Satan. And what was the reason? Although Peter's faith was firm and clear about who Jesus was, and that is that he was not an ordinary man, but the anointed one, the Messiah, who had come to save the world, Peter was not prepared to accept the implication of that faith. And when Jesus began to explain to them what that profession of faith implied in concrete action, Peter thought he could protect Jesus by saying, this can't happen to you. And Jesus, who had in Matthew's gospel told Peter that it was the father who knew the son who revealed him to Peter and not human beings, and who in Matthew's gospel had proclaimed this faith, the foundation of the church, and who on account of that faith had called Peter the rock of our faith and given him the keys to the kingdom, sadly called Peter Satan, an obstacle to God's project. Because rather than listening, continuing to listen to God's voice, Peter had started listening to popular opinion. I remind all priests and bishops, to be popular does not mean to be right. Many of the things some priests are teaching you today are false. And they know it is for, they are false. But they say that is what the people want. Many of the things they do, some, very few, luckily, during mass are wrong. And they know those things are wrong. But the people want that. Jesus told Peter in last gospel, you are an obstacle. Last Sunday's gospel. You are an obstacle anytime you, as an apostle, you are no longer listening to the voice of the Father and walking behind the Master, you are an obstacle. To strengthen their faith and make them see in advance the glory that awaited him after his death, he took them up to the mountain. After that experience with Peter and the rest of the apostles. Although we have not read that in today's gospel, Jesus took the apostles to the mountain for the experience of the transfiguration. And there they saw his glory that was like a post-resurrection experience. And Peter said, look, one thing I ask of the Lord to be here forever. From there, they came down. When they came down, what did they meet? The devil. Because immediately after the night adoration that you do, the peaceful moment you spend with Christ in the morning, once you get out of this church and walk into the streets of Lagos, you encounter the challenges of life. And face to face with this boy who was possessed, the apostles could not do anything because the people who were more interested in popular opinion could not even have faith on the apostles. They were waiting for Oga. And after Jesus had cast out this, this, this uh, demon and reassured his apostles again, he continued teaching and healing. And at a point now, takes the apostles aside. Last Sunday, he had told us we have to take our cross and follow him. 
Now he takes them aside to teach them something important that did not need any distraction. And as he told them that he was, he repeated what he told them, which Peter had opposed. The son of man is going to be killed. But he will rise again on the third day. This time, Peter had learned his lesson. He ignored him. He didn't oppose. And none of the apostles opposed. They just kept quiet and moved on. Sometimes, after preaching all our sweet homilies, the people are smiling from the pew and they have not even understood what we said. They didn't understand him, but they did not ask any question. Jesus knew they didn't understand. And by the way, until he left, he, they didn't understand him. Because if you read Acts chapter 1, after the experience of the resurrection, before the ascension, when they came to the mountain, they asked Jesus again, is it now time for us to hand over the kingdom to Israel? Which means all those three years of instruction and miracles didn't settle. And they entered the house. Jesus knew something was worrying them. What was it you were discussing while you were on the way? None of them spoke. The Lord had just told you he was going to die. And you are arguing about who was the greatest among you. They were ashamed and they couldn't talk. This is a daily experience in life. Struggle for power. Struggle for positions. And Jesus has to remind us today that first position or any position of responsibility in his community of friends is for service. I once read, I think it was on one of these WhatsApp status. I don't know whether I'm, I'm getting the words correct. If anybody wants power, it is to do something evil. Because if it is to do something good, you don't need power. Love is enough. When people are struggling for power in elective posts in Nigeria, councillors in our local government, well, those ones don't struggle again because there's no election for local government. They are just handpicked and placed. Governors, representatives in the various legislative houses, president, what do they tell us? Give me the chance to serve you. Service indeed. The first among us, one thing about leadership and about being first in this country and everywhere in the world about power is once a person is elected to such posts, he loses the physical power to open his door, the door of his car. So that once his car stops, some other person has to come out and open his door for him. That is service in our society. He can't carry his bag. No matter how light it is, some other person has to carry it for him. He can't pick up anything that he allows to fall. No, a girl can't bend down now. If now, madam, she can't even hold her umbrella when the rain is beating her. Because that, how will she be first lady or manager? That is how we see the first. Those who are in first positions are always, almost always thinking just of themselves and their convenience to the detriment of the others. And woe to you if you ever dare to point that out. You become the enemy of the society. As the first reading reminds us, very often people say, good, you speak truth to power. Well, let us just speak truth to everybody. 
But when you are speaking the truth, be ready for a rough life. But is that all? What of what happens in our churches? Some of these organizations that call themselves churches, some go by the name Pentecostal churches, are just associations where individuals are idolized, the poor are manipulated to contribute to the convenience of the pastor, with all the daddy, daddy, daddy around him, and the people who cannot even afford a taxi or a drop from their home to their place of work or off, uh, in the, to the market, but have to take the riskiest and the rickettiest means of transportation, are contributing money to buy somebody a jet and call it God's blessing. And that is how the first is servant. And what is the service they offer? More manipulation of sweet talk that will make people contribute more. And we all can notice there is something wrong with that. But move in. Move into the Catholic Church. Leave the Pentecostals alone. Move into the Catholic Church. Are we immune to this problem? This thing that happened, some, happened among the apostles, are we safe? As we are entering, fathers, you remember me complaining. The organist entombed H.S. Achedos Magnus. You know what that song says? Behold the great priest who does what God loves. Is even in past tense. Who did what God loves. I'm still alive and he said I did. And the next verse said, there was nobody like him in doing the will of God. Which kind of trouble be this one now? And I tell my priests, even those who every day are angry at me for what I have, uh, assignments I have given them, will tell the lie and tell themselves there's nobody like me in doing the will of God. And when the bishop is entering and hearing H.S. Sachidus as the first person, now what happens in the psych? What happens in the psych is that people, including the bishop, sees that position as a position of authority and power. Service dis disappears to the background. Ask fathers. Anytime priests suspect that there is a search, for another bishop, war begins in a diocese among priests. Father Nalai, you they look me like that. Jesus told his disciples he was going to die, and they were struggling for positions of power. You hear your bishop is about to retire, or he is very sick, and priests are maneuvering. The interesting thing, though, is that I know that no such maneuverings ever influences who emerges as bishop. But most priests don't know and they don't believe it, even if they know. But that is the reality of our life. Now, leave priests and bishops. Come to the lay faithful. Why so much fight to be president of CMO, CWO, CM? Lady Ghost Association, Knights of St. John, Knights of Mulumba, is it service? No. No. Something is wrong somewhere. I have never seen people fight to serve. Though we have to realize what Jesus is reminding all of us. And St. James tells us this struggle is because we are always competing with one another in jealousy and envy. You forget your own gift that God has given you for your brothers and sisters and you are looking at another person you want to be number one. Number one for what? There is a story, a folk story in my dialect. I won't even attempt to tell it in my dialect because even if there were Igbo people seated here, they wouldn't understand my dialect. I will tell you the story. That one hunter had many children. 
And once he went for a hunt, each of his children was very gifted. He went for a hunt and didn't come back. But because the children were many, they went ahead as if nothing had happened. Until at a point in the night, one of them who had the gift of remembering things remembered, Daddy is not yet back. And somebody said, yes, yeah. others said, yes, it's past the time. Even sometimes it's delayed, but it's past the time now. We must look for him. As they set out to look for him, they didn't know what direction to go. But one of them was gifted to find out where lost things were. And he led them to a lake. Daddy is here. And they were helpless inside the lake. But they remembered one of them was a gifted diver. And he dived into the lake and picked up the body of their dad. He was already dead. They extracted the water, no life. But one had a special gift of reviving the dead through prayer. He began praying and praying and praying and their father came back to life. And when they took their father back to the house, there was a large feast. And the father said, he killed a cow and said that the heart of the cow belonged to the person among them who performed the most important assignment in his coming back to the family. War broke out. The one who revived him said, well, I'm the one, he was dead. Otherwise, if I hadn't prayed, he would see that he had remained dead. And the other one said, look at you. Did you know where he was? If I hadn't shown you people where he was, would you even have been able to revive him? And the other said, and as you showed us where he was, were you able to bring him out? And the first one said, all of you had forgotten him. I remembered him. So in your opinion, who played the most important role? God's children. Who is more important and playing the more important role? Every person has his own assignment. There is nothing to struggle for. Use your own gift to save your brothers and sisters and you will be the first. This is true of the family. This is true of the society. And it is also very true and very much so of the church. Let us pray that God's children in the church, especially those of us who have been called to positions of responsibility, will realize that ours is a position of trust given for service, that service of total self-offering for our brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things we are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He 
are ascended into heaven and be seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the suffering and death of Jesus Christ is a mystery of salvation which we will never fully understand. Let us ask the Lord to give us the deeper faith, a deeper faith, so that we may grasp more fully the meaning of suffering in our world today. Our response shall be, teach us your ways. Teach us your ways. For the leaders of the church, that their patient endurance in the face of hostility and suffering may be assigned to all Christians of the resurrection. Lord, hear us. Teach us your ways. For those who work for peace, that they may be prepared to pay the price of peace and endure the loss of friends because they speak up against violence. Lord, hear us. For those who are confined to their beds of suffering, that they may be given the gift of patience and use their sickness to God's glory by uniting it with the sufferings of Jesus on the cross. Lord, hear us. For refugees from war torn countries, that they may find safe refuge in their new homes and have the courage to start their lives afresh, putting aside all bitterness and hatred for their oppressors. Lord, hear us. In the silence of our hearts, we make our own petitions to God who has compassion on us. We pray with Mary, who stood by the cross of Jesus as we pray. Hail Mary. Heavenly Father, you sent your only Son to teach us the life of love and service through humility. We ask the grace that imitating him, we may receive still more abundantly of your blessings, that we may be able to use them to serve our brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. From the New Catholic Hymn Book in 269. Thank you. 
and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be yours through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. to the Lord our God. It is right and just. The right and just are duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule it in your name, to run in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as a joyful celebration we are clean. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. How humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred Martins, and our Bishop Godfrey, honor a celebrating Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all who pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph as spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Joseph Marello, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to it, eternal life, and will praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. With him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give out this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of our church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the saints of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room. Let me say your word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Communion prayer for help. Oh God, help me to make a good communion. Mary, my dearest mother, pray to Jesus for me, my dear guardian angel. Lead me to the altar of God. Amen. 
from the New Catholic Hymn Book, Hymn 435. Hymn 435. Saint Joseph, Saint Joseph, whose protection is so great, so strong, so comes before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O Saint Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O Saint Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the keys when I draw my dying breath. Saint Joseph, patron of departing soul, pray for us. Amen. Blessed Cyprian, Michael, when it turns in, our lady star of the sea. Let us pray. Graciously raise up on our bones your royal of this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption in both in history and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary and Joseph. Your 
glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Honor, honor, honor to Mary and Joseph. It's now time for the discount collection. Let us kindly come for the discount collection. From the new oh, yeah. from the new Catholic hymn book, hymn two six five. Hymn two six five. Excellency, the most Reverend Godfrey, Ibrahim Beke Ola, the Catholic Bishop of Nsuka, which is in our community. Uh, yesterday, at past noon or probably maybe late in the afternoon i got a call and i, I saw my phone right and i said oh bishop <laughs> i said i have myself again this time around and he said father i will be with you at mass today i said yes my lord thank you my lord and today he is here with us at mass so On behalf of our parish priests, the very name of Sir Gabriel Osu, we wish to welcome you, my Lord, to our Lady Star of the Sea. May our Lady Star of the Sea continue to intercede on your behalf. As you have been chosen to lead the people of Nsuka, may our Lady Star of the Sea continue to provide and care for you and grant you more and even graces you need to shepherd your people in Nsuka. And those of us here also, we pray that our Lord will come to grant you fruitful ministry. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Thank you for coming to our latest time to see you once again. And I thank our dear brother, Reverend Father Kenneth, for joining us at this Mass. And you all who have been today in this Mass, we say thank you for coming. May they come to bless us all in our voice, apostolate, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as Bishop has said to us, let us learn to serve. And may we serve our God in truth and in sincerity. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. And have a wonderful evening. God bless you. And forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Wish you a blessed week ahead. Same to you, Bishop. From the Catholic Hymn Book, Hymn Number Two.